Hey, what's up, everybody? This video right here is a first for multiple reasons. Number one, I don't usually do videos that are in the realm of what's trending, what's popular, what the media is spinning. I don't get into celebrity gossip, celebrity hearsay, but I'm going to make an exception with this video and I'm going to tell you why. Number one, as this particular story was put out in the public domain and as I watched interviews, read articles, and even watched the trailer, what I've gathered by watching all of this, my BS meter was just going into overdrive. So when I saw all of this, I was already thinking that I think I'm going to make an exception and do a reading video about this BS. So right in the midst of considering doing a video about it, I had people writing me and asking me to give my thoughts or give my read or if I could do a reading on it. And to me, I saw that as the universe saying, go ahead, talk about it. Talk about your perspective, your read on the situation. So I meditated on it, and here I am. Now, what I don't like about this entire ordeal is how child molestation and pedophilia is being used as a tool or catalyst for personal gains. I take issue with this because as someone who has survived years of systematic sexual abuse and who has broken the cycle, helping others to break the cycle. I don't like the way the waters are being muddied by people and by a machine who's only going to complicate an already complicated subject matter. There has always been a knee-jerk reaction for those of us who have been sexually abused to not believe what we say. But when we have a situation like this playing out before the world and the media is running with it and presenting a one-sided narrative, what it will do is make it that much more difficult for those of us who have been abused to be taken seriously. So to balance the scales, I thought that I would do a video on the subject matter and do an intuitive and calibration reading on James Safechuck, on the director of the HBO special. I would like to do a calibration and intuitive reading on Wade Robeson, on Michael Jackson, on the documentary itself and I'm going to tell you guys how I see all of this playing out in the end now usually I'm not allowed or I don't do readings on anyone without their permission but because these are public figures in the public domain making claims and accusations that would require us to draw our own conclusions anyway. I have the right to read them based on their character, what they're saying, their intentions, their motivations, and so on and so forth. Now, there's much more that I pick up from all of these people that I'm not at liberty to say for ethical reasons. And let me also say that for legal reasons, I have to say that this is for entertainment purposes only. Again, for legal reasons, I must say that this is for entertainment for purposes those of you only. For those of you who are just coming across my video, my readings come by way of a natural, intuitive ability and discernment that I've always had. I was born with it. I would always just know things about people, places, and situations. But at the time, there was no evidence to show what I would know. But the proof of what I had picked up would always come out. 
I also use charts. I love Dr. Hawkins' calibration charts. I use his calibration charts because they've been very effective and very, very accurate. And his work inspired me to create my own charts. So what I do is I'll get the sense of something and I will turn around and I will confirm it with the Dr. Hawkins ch calibration chart and then I will confirm it with my chart. So my level of accuracy is pretty high. Even if you guys go back and look at all the blogs that I've ever written and the videos that I've ever done on reading even popular prophecies and narratives, my accuracy rate is about 93%. And that's only involving what is in the public domain. My accuracy rate with what I picked up on over the years that my family and friends and associates witnessed is even higher. Now with that out of the way, let's get started. Let's start off with James Safechuck. James Safechuck calibration reading comes to 452. Now what this essentially means is that this is a person who is a little above average consciousness. This is someone who is obviously intelligent, very wise beyond their years, and a very uh, reasonable person. However, he's also someone who is easily clouding judgment when they are in a very emotional state. In, in other words, when someone such as this person is, say for instance, in love, and there could be all of the signs in place that the person that they're in love with is shaky, questionable, or even deceptive. They will allow their love and want to be next to this person override all of that. Now, again, there's some things that I cannot say, but you know, you guys can kind of read in between the lines. Now, when I focus on this guy's energy, uh, I definitely pick up that he really wants to be successful in the industry, particularly with acting. That came through very strongly. And I feel and sense that he took some acting. Now, this is very, very important because I do feel that this is someone who was sexually abused, but not by Michael Jackson. This is one of the reasons why this person can come across so pure and genuine, because I'm, I'm sensing that they're using method acting, hence taking something that had actually happened and use it as a way of method acting to make their claim or accusation seem fair. And I'm going to tell you more about what I get from uh, James Safechuck at the end when I bring it all together, this entire situation. All right, next, Dan Reed. He is the director of leaving Neverland. And the reason why I wanted to do a reading on him is because he has become a face of this documentary and he has also been one who has outright called Michael Jackson a pedophile based off of what these two have claimed. So because he has interjected his face, his name and his likeness into this campaign, he is now fair game. Now, I got a calibration level of 300 for him. And what that essentially means is that he has the basic level of consciousness. This would be one who is plugged into the matrix. This would be someone who identifies everything that they are by their academic accomplishments by how much money they have, by status. This will be someone who is motivated by clout and status and very trusting of what the system 
teaches or what the system green lights doesn't question or go far beyond conventional wisdom. This is someone who has zero discernment ability. And I also feel this is someone who is very staunch in ego, love power, love dominance, and love to be in control. Wanting clout and status comes across very strongly here with this person. They see this as an opportunity for a come up. Now, interestingly enough, and I sense this very greatly, that there will be some accusations and claims surrounding him as it relates to inappropriate sexual activity and sexual harassment and so on and so forth. But I'm going to stop there. I, again, I can't say but so much, but I definitely see a case of what you put out will come right back to you. But when it comes back, it's going to be far more vicious. All right. Wade Robeson. Now, this is a very interesting read right here, which again, I felt it very strongly, but the charts just confirm it. Wade Robeson calibration level is a negative 100. Again, a negative 100. This screams someone who is all about themselves service to self and they will do say anything to get what it is that they want I feel very strongly that this person is a level narcissist this is someone who is very desperate I also feel a lot of influences by those with longer pockets influencing and feeding the narcissism I mean, the moment I saw this guy, I just saw deception on an epic level. Now, again, here's what is interesting. He's making the accusation that Michael Jackson molested him. And I'm not getting that. I am getting that this guy is troubled and I am getting that he was molested. But it was not by Michael Jackson. I feel that there was an older female who touched him and I can't say but so much I'm even picking up the connection and the relation with this female but I feel that there's a female who molested them and again they are using a real experience to apply a form of method acting to make it look like it applied to Michael Jackson again I'm going to speak more about these guys near the end of the video so again please watch and Listen to the very end. All right, next, let's do the glove one himself, Michael Jackson. Now, before I get into reading Michael Jackson, most of you guys who've been watching me over the years, you know that I am a Michael Jackson fan and supporter, always have been. And let me tell you why. It wasn't always just about Michael, the music and the performer that I really resonated with. It was about Michael, the person, the heart of who and what made him who he is. Michael Jackson had a perfect integration of his masculine, feminine, and inner child. He embraced and in integrated all three. I resonate with that. Just like Michael, I spent most of my life only hanging around a group of people, a specific group of people that people looked at me sideways about. I was more comfortable hanging with and being around children as well and females. Still to this day, I spend most of my time around my sister and my niece and nephews. But just like Mike, when you know and truly understand our story and you feel our heart, you will get why we do what we do. Now, there's no one on the face of this earth who has lived the kind of life of a Michael Jackson, living in a fishbowl your entire life and becoming the greatest, most famous person on the planet, can't go anywhere, 
did not have a childhood at all. We know the story. He, he said it many times before. But getting to a place in the point where you're so wealthy, where you can basically recreate or create a childhood that comes from a very pure and honest place. But of course, I can understand how from the outside world where we have been socialized very differently than he has. Again, Michael Jackson has not been socialized like we have. So from our perspective, yes, it is very odd and strange looking to see a grown man spending time and hanging out with little boys. But when you're someone who sees beyond that, you get it. When you're someone who seeks understanding, understanding, and you have empathy, and you know the story, you get that. So I resonated with Michael with the man child and the integration of the masculine and feminine. And this is all a part of what made him so powerful. But at the same time, that's very, very threatening and offensive to those of us who have been socialized to see what is quote unquote normal as anything but what he was just doing from a pure and honest place. And just think about it, even after these allegations were thrown at him and he was under intense investigation, he continued to hang out with these guys, with these young guys who are now accusing him. Now think about it. If he were really guilty of these things, why would he continue to hang out with the very people he's allegedly having a sexual relationship with, knowing that the system is truly out to get him? Why would he continue to hang out with them? And why would they make them star witnesses? Although there have been many other guys who were always very vocal about Michael never touching them. Why would they instead choose the very two who was accusing him of molesting them? Why would they put them on the stand? Do y'all understand what is involved when a witness is um, heavily cross-examined and investigated? These guys who do this kind of work, they know what they are doing. They're very good at what they're doing. So if these guys were, as they allege, hiding to protect Michael and lying for him to protect Michael, they would have caught that in the cross-examination, in the interrogation, because it's very, very intense. And they're very clever in how they catch people when they lie. So Michael, in his pure heart and pure place, just was not getting and understanding how and why we would look at something from his mind is very innocent and pure and tainted and painted in a sexual light. Now the media has been grabbing this and spinning this and putting this out in the world and painting this narrative over and over to the point where now you have people who are average in consciousness soaking it up without doing any research, using no discernment, and they're just running with it and throwing this man under the bus based off of a perception that was cleverly, cleverly orchestrated and presented before the world. Now, I did a calibration reading on Michael and I got 801. Michael Jackson was not perfect, none of us are perfect. That's the nature of being in a physical body in a world of duality. But he was absolutely obsessed with perfecting or perfection. And in his innocence and in his naivete and really being a victim of circumstance, Michael Jackson is the real victim here on multiple levels that I'm not gonna get into aside from what the obvious is this public lynching, yes, I've heard people say that. That's exactly what it is. This is a smear campaign and a public lynching. And it's also an effort to paint a pedophile as someone who looks or acts weird or look a certain kind of way or behave a certain kind of way. We all know that although that can be true on rare occasions, but in most cases, those who molest children, the pedophiles, are those 
who look the part, who act normal, who present themselves in a quote unquote normal way, in a way that society approves of. They are usually the people you least expect and they are not going to be parading around with those that they molest because their conscience would be too guilty. It would be too paranoid for them to be that transparent as say someone like a Michael Jackson. Michael Jackson has an 801 calibration level that is in the realm of Christ consciousness. He was a living, walking embodiment of a Christ being. He was an anomaly on every level. He was an enigma on every level and that was a threat and that was offensive to a lot of people, especially him as a businessman which we know he was ruthless and many in those circles have egg on their faces and their egos are bruised and they have a vengeful spirit now about it. So this plays a part in this entire campaign. All right, here's the big question. And I charted this. I asked, did Michael Jackson ever in any shape or form had any inappropriate sexual relations or relationship with a child or children at any point in his life? Had the real Michael Jackson ever in his life at any time, any place ever touched or had any sexual or inappropriate sexual relations with a minor or children? And I got a resounding no, no, no. This guy was terribly misunderstood and the media jumped on a bandwagon and they exploited that misunderstanding for a greater agenda or as he said in, with his own mouth, conspiracy. All right, just for extra measure, I decided that I would do a calibration level on the documentary itself, Leaving Neverland. And what I got is a negative 499. That is the lowest that one can go. It is the lowest of low. What does that mean? That means that everything about this documentary is for a self-serving reason. That means they threw in every level of deception, trickery, lies, half-truths, to tug and manipulate the emotions of the viewers. Again, a viewer who has average consciousness does not have any discernment and would not have enough wherewithal to go outside of what is being told or fed to them to see the holes all in the documentary. So they will take it and run with it, but that's the point. That's what they were relying on. There's an element of lust, revenge, spitefulness, every negative definition you can think of has been put into this documentary. The documentary is the face of a collective from the minds of everyone who is involved. The salaciousness, the propaganda, the distraction, it's all there. This is the lowest calibration reading I have ever gotten on anything. Those who came together and put this thing together did it under very, very orchestrated, organized, deceptive means. Years ago, a news team came to report a story in our neighborhood. Now, prior to this, we would consistently see how the media would always go and get the most inarticulate, the most unkept, ebonic speaking, black person they could find to give a commentary about whatever the case may be. Because there has always been this push to paint black people who live in the ghettos and the hood in a very monolithic, very negative, stereotypical way. I saw this firsthand when a news crew came into my neighborhood and I saw how they bypass certain members of the community to look for that stereotypical, inarticulate person to give a commentary. This is what I talk about all the time about shaping 
people's perception, when you feed a perception long enough to a people who are undiscerning, who don't interact with anything outside of what they see or what they've been fed, this shapes their perception of reality. So they believe wholeheartedly that what they see is the truth because this is all they've ever seen. I used to work for an elite agency and I had a co-worker who was assigned to work at the Democratic National Convention. She was there and something happened. I'm not going to get into what it was, but something happened and she was right there and she saw everything. The story of what happened was posted in the Washington Post. When she read that article, she was livid. She was in disbelief. Now, this is someone who, very basic in consciousness, they're one of those people who believe what they see. They believe everything they've been taught in the educational system. If you were to bring anything to them that's outside of what is quote-unquote normal, they would look at you with side eyes and think you're crazy. Now, if she had not experienced that for herself, and I had told her that the media lies and they spin stories for whatever reason all the time she would be one of those people who, oh i don't think that's true she wouldn't buy it but because she was there and she saw it firsthand when she saw what was written in the washington post the story was completely different from what she said it was so when the story was totally spun and posted in the washington post she was outraged. She was pissed off. And she just kept saying, I can't believe they would post a lie like this. Like, I was right there. She was blown. And I'm sitting there calmly looking at her. And I said, well, why are you surprised? This is what they do. This is what they do. They love to spin and tell lies. And they feed it to the gullible public to feed and tug on emotion. They want salaciousness. They want negativity. They want stereotypes. They want they want to feed people with a certain privileged mindset. The mass media is not only mind control, it influences and shapes our perception of reality. When you're not going beyond that, what you perceive to be factual and believable and truthful, for the most part, is coming by way of this machine. So when you see, I have seen it, Many of us have seen it, how the media spin stories and are only a lot of lies and half truth and salaciousness to float and surface and they get behind it because it supports their narrative or what they want the public to accept. You see this enough, you get to a point where you don't trust anything they put out there. So why would these documentaries that come out of nowhere like this be any different. I experience it here on YouTube. Subject matters that I speak on where I'm given a different narrative or a more fair and balanced narrative. Y'all don't see my videos getting hundreds of thousands and millions of views per video, but you best believe they'll make sure those people who are presenting and sharing the narrative that they want out there they want people's perception of reality to be what it is. They're going to let that flourish. They're not suppressing and blocking that. I must keep saying this because YouTube, social media is a part of mass media now. So it's no different. So I am glad to see more people using their platforms to expose the deception, especially with something like this because this is a very serious and sensitive subject matter and should not be played with and we need to be using that subject matter to bring it on to the real victimizers and give sympathy and care to the real so what's the motivation why would they be doing this now number one it serves as a major distraction because while we're busy paying attention to this propaganda smear campaign piece we're not paying attention to the real victims and the real pedophiles and the molesters, number one. Number two, there is money involved. It's about money and clout. Absolutely. You better believe it's always about money, power, and clout. When you're talking about one of the wealthiest men that have ever walked the planet, and when you look at what 
um, Michael Jackson's estate stay in the game as long as the world is turning. You're talking about tremendous wealth and power. These characters have been made the face of this campaign, but it's bigger than them. I definitely feel that very strongly. There's some very powerful men with long pockets who are behind this. I feel that Wade Robeson approached and offered, as they've done other people, a chance at a larger than life opportunity by making these claims. And I sense that Wade then got his friend, Safe Chuck, <laughs> let me watch what I say, got his friend Safe Chuck on board for good measure to give his claim more credibility. Now, I strongly feel that they thought that by just going through the estate and making the claim, it would be enough to shake some millions out of the estate and it would just kind of go away, especially from Safe Chuck. I'm feeling that Safe Chuck is having regrets about jumping on this bandwagon and going along with this. I feel that he's the most nervous, the most uncomfortable as to where all of this is going and really want out. But like anything else, once you tell a lie this big, you have to stick with it. I really do sense that he thought that they would just make these claims to the estate and the estate would just pay out. They didn't expect the estate to say no and hold out this long and them having to push their bluff by going to the next level. Safe Chuck especially didn't expect it to get this far and he's very, very nervous about where things are now. I'm feeling that very strongly with him, especially as more of the truth that was conveniently and purposely left out of the documentary comes to light. Wade Robeson is a narcissist, a grade A narcissist, and like all narcissists, they will always try to find a way to justify blaming someone else or faulting someone else for their failures and why they want to use that other person justifiably as the reason why they are failing. I mean, the minute I saw the guy and when those words came out of his mouth, my BS meter was just going into overdrive. It's a very, very deceptive, cunning, charming, because he's charming and come across very, very loving and friendly. He's duped a lot of people, but has burned a lot of people in the process. And he has not seen anything yet. As more come out about this, it's just not going to end well with him. I can't go into details about what I mean with regards to that, but it's not going to end well for really none of these guys, but especially him. Now, the director of the documentary and their cohorts got Oprah Winfrey on the bandwagon to give this circus credibility, but we see how that has turned into a huge backlash thanks to what we call the Great Awakening. More people out there are seeing this farce and are voicing their opinions and are putting out the inconsistency and exposing the lies. And there are going to be many more, trust me, when I tell you this. The Jackson estate will be victorious. They're not getting away with this. Now, this is the thing I really want to drive home. When you jump on the bandwagon of tearing down and destroying such a pure-hearted and righteous being. Not perfect, but was the closest to perfection in terms of the heart of a being that you could come across in this world. Just know that what you put out is going to come back and it's going to come back ten times worse. It's just the time that we're in now. This is the day of the great reveal, the veil is thinning. You can't tell lies, especially epic lies, and think that you're going to get away with it at this time. You're not understanding how your lies is negatively impacting the loved ones of those that you're lying on and tearing down. I would like to see a law passed where those who falsely accuse someone of pedophilia, they go to jail. 
these women who are out here falsely accusing men because they don't want to be with them, a molestation, uh, 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 accusing them of molestation and pedophilia. These women need to go to jail. Anyone who falsely accused anyone of this needs to go to jail. And we need to send that message to humanity to keep false like this, no matter what their motivation is, from doing this in the future.